Finished business G Matson lawsuit against the district. Um, we need to go into closed session for that. But consider a attorney client or attorney of written or attorney of, um, written attorney's opinion. <coughs> Anything else? Want a motion to accept the? I move that we accept this. Did you did you say that you were adding an agenda item regarding the community garden? Yes, we did. Okay, so I would just like to speak to that, please. Uh, Kelly Van Kenhoven, City of Escanaba, Delta County Commissioner, District Four. Um, I received a call from a concerned citizen regarding the community garden, um, saying that the water isn't properly working, and um, that person wanted to know where you know, who was responsible, where it goes from here, things of that nature. Um, so I'm glad to see that you put it on the agenda and I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say about it. That's all, thank you. All right, thanks. Anyone else for public comment agenda item? Anybody else for public comment on agenda item? Okay. Public comment agenda item. All right, thank you so much, moving right along. We need to approve the meeting minutes from May 8th, 2024's regular board meeting. I move that we accept them. How about a second for that? Then we go into discussion. How about a second on that motion? I'll second it. Thanks. I guess given the fact that I wasn't here, I'm assuming that. Well, well you're asking me to sign it, so. Oh, well, well, you just assigned saying that it's in a proof. That's how we know that. I understand. And you didn't want to. You also have to, uh, did you bring, you also have to sign last. 
Yeah, yeah, you have to sign that she has a copy for you. No, no, April. April, April, April you need to sign April's, right? I don't know if you're right. I can't tell you. It's over here in the packet. We'll sign that one. You did come in, but you didn't sign this. It's a whole, I got the whole packet for you while you're gone. Mm -hmm. All right. You need some more time reading that every single But I can go through it if you want to. I just need your signature so it's an official. Mm -hmm. I did send it to Indar because it was approved. Yeah. Just so that we made that time frame. Okay. But we just made it, made it super. Super official. Super official. With your bandy wall. <laughs> cool. Um, is there any more discussion on this? Glenn, what do you think? No, it's fine. You're good? You're happy? Yeah. Okay. All those in favor accepting the board motion? Aye. 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 The opposition, thank you. Motion carries. Uh, tre treasures report. Well, a couple things. On our financial reports, we're finding so minor uh, irregularities that carry forward month after month, year after year. Seems like they went back a while. And uh, just today I found five unknown envelopes with money in them and uh, receipts which might resolve those carry over things from sometime. How much money would you buy that? I'm in our junk pile. <laughs> you know, this you guys clean up storage. Unit. Literally, it's yeah, we, we put the very box in there. Huh. You mean in a storage unit? <laughs> Four yeah. eight. Oh, you know, I you should have that that. Was that your money? Well, I was yeah. doing it. Was <laughs> it wasn't an ID with it, said Joe Kaplan. <laughs> oh, the one says my. Okay. How much money? I don't think there's a lot. I don't know. We, I we didn't open them. We, one of them was open. We opened one. Okay. So we we saw that there was $24 or $26. Okay. And, well, then, know. What? and, and a receipt okay. um, with the name on it. And I think there was one that had a a check, a personal check. So that may or may not play that. We, we, opened, we, two, we, we opened two of the envelopes, looked at it, saw there was money, said that's it. We're giving it to her. Yeah. Or bring yeah. it in. We brought it. So Chris has it to uh, help work up. Okay. I mean, yeah. Like I said, it was mine. So, no, it's, it's, you know, it's okay. coffee money. All right. But it may resolve. <laughs> It may resolve one of the thorns in the side about our financial. Um, we've resolved through April. Reconciled. Reconciled. I'm sorry. Reconciled through April, mm -hmm. and um, I would think that these small payments because that was basically what we were talking about. I think they will bring us into balance. So we're only off by a few misplaced payments. So basically there's uncategorized funds. Hopefully we can match them. Some of them might not be good anymore. Yeah. Right. A long time. But at well, least we, we can, will get some answers. Right. We can resolve and it. We'll see what we can do to get the books. Right. But there's been quite a mess with it, so it's just it's it some time. It's coming around. So what do we have here as far as the report statement of cash flow? Uh, this is there's actually just two um two pages there. Okay. One is a statement of cash flow totals on top and then they expanded by quarter underneath from october 1st oh 2023 oh yeah. from the beginning of fiscal year fiscal year all right 
<laughs> and as we get the books in order and we're reconciled, then we'll be able to get to giving you the proper documents or slips of the proper balance. loss or balance sheet. Balance sheet. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, we're almost there. Cool. So we're close. Um, and that's it. I mean, that's enough. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Move on to standing committee reports. Personnel. Mm -hmm. Who's going to report? Are you going to talk? And Michaela took a position with NRCS? Yeah, I was going to do okay. that in mind, but we can do it right now. No, no, no. We'll look at if you have any report, that's great. Um, I don't have anything for personnel. Property and equipment. Um, it's their business. There's also a, in that little packet I gave you, earlier there's a receipt uh, from mr Matson selling a piece of property um i'm not i, I don't know what it was but it might <coughs> it might be of interest uh as i said we're bringing little things finally getting closer to the dot cool so in In our uh, report for um, property, uh, the property which is in storage in one of our units, um, just a few items, uh, will be, I'll take them to the uh, cabin property tomorrow and they'll reside out there better fit there. Alright. Cool. We, we sold it. We sold some soap curtains. Yeah. Property report on that. A couple items. We did not receive a minimum bid on the mower, the gravelly mower. So at current, um, we're looking at putting a policy in place that any surplus equipment, we're going to go down the municipal uh, partners list first. So we're talking with the fairgrounds right now on the lawnmower. Um, they haven't gotten back on it. Um, they, they are definitely in need of it. Um, they want it. They have to come up with, a, with the funding um, for the purchase on, on that. So that's where that stands right now with the, with the uh, lawnmower. The gravelly. Yeah, the gravelly. Um, we, we don't have it. Uh, we're just kind of hold, help, you know, we're kind of holding off on to see if they can get financing, and then we'll come back with the, with the proposal to the board that we're we're going to make a motion for that. Okay. Yeah, we'll make yeah. a motion for that. We, but we had a, we, uh, we motioned to support it. I think it was ninety five. Yeah, uh, minimum bid of ninety five. Uh, uh, last uh, meeting, but that's just not going to hold up. Okay. Right, but if we go to a, a, a municipal partner, we're, it'll, we're looking at doing a, um, suggesting a little, you know, a lesser amount um, and receive benefits down the road. So is what we're looking at. Else. As far as the turbidity curtains, they're all gone. And my understanding, we went with, uh, we, we had a couple, um, you know, we had a couple, we finally built out Manistique. We've received that payment. That was what, three or four years in the, in the coming. We've, we've that was the road commissions. Road commission, yeah. yeah. We got those. Um, Heather sold or made agreement with uh, Marquette. Have we received their payment yet? Not yet, but Not they, yet. they have an invoice. Road commission? Right, and their build up they picked up. Um, we had an individual that purchased five of them and then we had seven left and he turned us on to a guy from Battle Creek that um, purchased the remaining seven. So there were, what, 12 in that total? And those have all been received, right? I received the payment from um, Bruce Tatro. Uh, and, uh, yeah, and then um, the other guy is from, uh, he received that certified check already, right? No? Not yet. Oh, you haven't received it? Mm -hmm. But we didn't have a picture of it, so I'm sure it's coming. 
Okay, yeah, I know he sent me the picture. I just thought yeah. we had to check by now. So, but as of now, they're gone. Hopefully, with, with the two payments coming in. Um, like I said, he, we haven't sent them a bill of sale yet until we receive the check, but. Cool. And those were, Bruce took those, he will arrange with the guy to pick them up from garden. So Over those in. will be, those will be. That's two thirds of the storage unit. Oh, yeah, that's why they, they made great progress. I would like to really kind of establish relationships with the municipality. So, right, the fairgrounds in particular, they let us use their site for a tree sale, no cost, everything included, which, right. is, which is good. So, we should try to work with these folks, right? And we we still have, and we're not going to we're not going to part with it unless there is a sale made. Yeah. I mean, there were there were yeah, yeah, yeah. questions asked us if we would rent it, lease it. Or whatever, and we our, our opinion is no. no. Um, in uh, like I said, they have to come up with the funding yet, so we all know how that goes. So we're just waiting. and if not, we have another the another avenue that somebody's looking for. We'll cross that bridge when when we get to it. If the if the fairgrounds doesn't. Uh, doesn't take it. We'd really like to see the fairgrounds because we'd really re like to reach out to the fairgrounds because they are they are really supportive of us and our tree sale and, and other endeavors with the, with the facility there. So I think that's, that's all we have on the... Well, lastly, the uh, we, as I mentioned, we, tomorrow I'll bring the remaining properties out of one of our storage units. To the cabin or to our property up there um that will close that unit out um we glenn and i pretty much hauled everything into the bigger storage unit um now it's at the bottom of the block and we s separated it into uh, areas so holly's materials that she uses for her activities are in one place. All of the tree sale, um, tree guards and everything that belongs to putting on our tree sale is all in one area. Um, we have a, another blast, go through it, dump it area of records so out of all the things that we sorted we were able to find some records which you're going to be interested in I suppose um, but they're going to be there for your perusal okay. process yeah process cool so then the, 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 the game plan is to go from two storage units we had a large one small one we just set we're deciding to keep the, the big one and we'll be done with the small one. Right, right. I, but I think after we get rid of the stove and all its parts and go through those other files, I think we'll be able to go to a small storage unit. Correct. But keep it located where we have the big storage unit, which is at the bottom of the hill and it's closer to the office. Right. Yeah, yeah, very good. That was the general consensus. Cool. Thank you. Kind of a long report, but there you go. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to talk about the. Uh, the uh, notice on the property, out in the garden, or should I mention that? You can talk about it. All right, so what do we have, 15 acres out in the garden near mm -hmm. Fayette? So we got a notice this last month about uh, uh, proposed zoning change. So I went to the zone, the county zone meeting and just made it known that we've had this property since I think the 50s. It's so old, the deed's not in the <clears throat> it's it, you can't look it up online, but I went to register deeds and got the deed and went out there, and um, it doesn't appear the rezoning has any impact on our property. But we have a legal ingress and egress easement, but it's not clear where it's located. It looks like it might go across pasture land, so we need to follow up. And, and is it they, 15 continuous acres? It's a it's square. Yeah, it's a square. A square then half of it's in the farm field and the other half of it is in this property that's that's going to be sold for uh, to different parcels. 
Who's using the farm field? <coughs> um, the neighbor? It's owned, well, the farm field is owned by uh, George, George, George. Well, I'm just. He's, he's a farmer out there. Yeah, but our, this 15 acres yeah. has part of it in a farm field. Or, no, know. no, it's all the way. It was donated by, my understanding it was donated by the school's district a long time ago, and it's all wooded, and okay. Chris and I were out in the garden doing something else and walked through it, and it's, it's, right, it's pretty nice. It's a nice wooded property. There's okay. tons of sign of deer, and there it sits for probably since uh, a while there, since it was replanted after, uh, <laughs> after the Great Depression. It's mostly pine stand plant, pine stand, so. <laughs> I love this story. Anyhow, um, we're going to figure out where a legal agreement is. We, we do have at least to uh, DT Energy, the airspace. And this was you know prior to us coming on the board, so we do get, get checks for my small checks for our airspace. It's something that was negotiated when, probably when Heritage was uh, <coughs> getting land leases. Anyhow, we'll just make sure we don't lose our legal access to it. It doesn't appear that the uh, <coughs> rezoning is going to have any impact on our ability to get to that property. We are going to have to map the township range on that to figure out if it comes to the front side. What are they asking you rezoning for? Uh, development? To, yeah, development to to small, smaller size lots, like larger lots or smaller lots. So. Sound good? Sure. Okay. Records. Thanks so much. Man. Oh, nice. Oh, let's see right there. Records. If I stop calling, yeah. it stops. Um, I don't have anything to report. Uh, I'll look to see what you gave me. It's of interest. I'm sorry for that. Oh, one last thing is all of the. ancient materials that we sorted out today mm -hmm. we took to the landfill and recycled all the paper products oh but not public records no i mean like printed <laughs> brochures okay <laughs> 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 so we take that FOIA coordinator shit for every student <laughs> 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 okay let's do it h pamphlets <laughs> yes that we that we hauled out of the basement. That I that I was going to leave in the basement. Right, right. At least so, it got recycled, right? Maybe recycled. Here you go. It was about a ton. Okay. Well. Thank you. We were very long. Uh, anything to report with finance? at this point I would recommend I've read I've looked over all the bills I would recommend we pay our bills. Oh that's in a new business. It's yep new oh, business. We it. Okay. My, my apologies. I don't even remember what I would get in finance. Catch all for if you forgot something you trust me. It's a second chance. It really is apparently for everyone. I get a third chance. Standing committee reports it is a second chance. Cool. Anything else? I'll just say you like it. M. Dark report. Rachel Booth, welcome. Hi, everybody. It's been a while since Hello. I've been here. Um, yeah, let's go. There's not a lot to talk about in my report, so if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, what I would point out to you is the quarter three reporting is due on July 7th. Um, Quarter three and quarter four does have some of your strategic planning documents that are due. So that's specifically from your operating grant. Um, so be aware of what's due and when. Um, you should not have to redo your quarter three strategic planning documents. So Heather and I are planning to talk about this a little bit more. Um, but do know that you need to have a fiscal year 25 annual business plan due by October 5th, so that'll be for fourth quarter. So you should be putting that on your agenda and be talking about it you know, a few months ahead of that deadline. Um, we've given you a template 
but um, it should align with your five-year long-range plan that you turned in two years ago. So make sure you're looking at that document and you're trying to build out what you're going to do next year. So if you have questions, just let me know. But I will talk more with Heather about this. Um, this month I added some information on the succession plan. Um, I try to put that in there about once a year because I really think it's good for boards to be looking at some kind of a succession plan for your district. So if you have turnover, um, you have something in place, but it's also kind of helping build out your long-term goals. I brought a copy of the succession plan template that we've given if you would like it. Um, I included it, but do you want me to pass it around? Oh, I, does, do you have a copy of it? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. As long as you want to see it. You probably should send it to us. Um, it's fluid. You, you use what is helpful, toss what isn't, but we tried to put in there what we think is really important when we see turnover and the, you know, the frustrations, the all the things that go with someone leaving your district and you don't have this stuff written down, you don't know where to find it. Um, Alger Conservation District is planning to host the Region 2 meeting this year. There's no dates or anything like that, but it will be in Chatham at the MSU Farm. Um, historically, the last few years, I will let you know that Menominee held it, uh, Menominee CD, and then Schoolcraft CD, and last year Chippewa Loose Mackinac held it, and this year Alger is hosting it. So I'm just throwing out there that maybe Delta would want to host it in the future. Put it on your radar. Right after Bill Gebic, Cuba. That's Region 1. Region 2 is Alger, Delta, Menominee East. Close. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you should get something from Matt Watkins, who's the district manager in Alger Conservation District, about when and what will be on the agenda. Um, and then lastly, I was at the budget hearing last September, and I know that you as a board were not... Um, excited about the budget that got laid out here. So I just wanted to put that out there that we did put together really nice templates last year that we handed out. Um, I had a meeting with Heather already about this whole budget timeline, but keep in mind that's in September. But the templates that MDARD has put together are very nice and I think that you as a board will appreciate what we've done. So just know that they're available and maybe start thinking about that this summer. Um, and the Appropriations Act and all of that. If you end up having questions, please let me know. But they're, again, they're fluid. Use them as you need to and what works for your district. So they're very transparent. You can see all your your items and your operational expenses, so. The budget is due when? So your budget right hearing is September. Year. So and hopefully you've picked your date. Yep. And then you need to turn that into the state in October to execute grants for next year. October so. 5th. No, that's your end of fiscal year 24 reporting. We don't have a deadline for your budget, but we will not sign your grant until we've gotten your budget, so. Sure. <coughs> but, yeah. Well, given that it's timeline for those grants, can you address the fact that we don't have a forester and that the statewide that's been held up? Yep. And then what about a C-type person or maybe even just give a Yeah, so, um, it's been an interesting year. It's something I haven't experienced. Generally, when there is an MDARD grant technician vacancy, there's a pretty quick turnaround for you to get information back from Lansing to go ahead and refill your position. Um, a couple of things have happened. One is that the department has realigned, and with that, we've got brand new leadership. Um, our, our units and our divisions all shifted around into a bureau structure, and um, our leadership within the executive office has a high regard for accountability, um, a lot of outcomes and metrics based expectations, and they've really looked at some of our grant programs. FAP um, has had some struggles with retention, um, and also just finding foresters has been hard for some districts. So right now ben schramm who's the program manager is in charge of trying to see what the roadmap for the program looks like moving forward and he's really thinking outside the box on like where have the struggles been and what does the program need and so he has put a hold on all refill requests i did not expect it would 
lasts this long, but I do not think you will hear back before the end of the fiscal year. So I'm hoping by October 1, you have a game plan and a grant coming your way, but it's been a really slow process. So you're not the only ones. Um, Chip Loose Mac over in the Sioux have not had their refill granted as well as some other districts downstate. So I haven't experienced that. Um, and then with CTI, the way that it works is CTI is a agreement between NRCS and MDARD. So the two partners come together and they have this agreement. It gets worked out in the summer and it gets signed by the end of the summer. Um, if you have a vacancy in house, NRCS has to approve the refill. They have done that. So NRCS has said, yes, we want to place um, a CTI technician back here in the Gladstone field office. But MDARD and NRCS have not finalized our agreement. And so until that happens, MDARD is not going to release the grant approval. So again, we're on hold. And I think that you'll probably hear in September again. So it's just been slow. <coughs> May I ask you then, you were looking for a couple of people before the vacancy. How, just generally, is that how is that been looking good? Well, or, well yes. Why don't we just wait until his report? Unless okay, well, I was, I was trying to piggyback it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just to be clear on filling uh, the position. If we haven't gotten the grant and we have a candidate, we would pay them out of our current assets. I mean, you would have to, because we will not let you bill us. But keep in mind that if we do not approve that refill, you are jeopardizing the fact that that may not come and you are, you no, are going to have to. I, I yeah, understand that. The liability I, I'm is just there. Thinking of, you know, hypotheticals here mm -hmm. if if that were to come and rather than lose the opportunity the opportunity with a right. you know a new employee and then reimburse ourselves from the grant oh, i don't think you could do you that you wouldn't be able to do that <coughs> huh. you would not be able to charge I the state for either of your technicians if you hired them yeah. for either fap or no, ctai Okay. Not until you've gotten an official email from Lansing saying, yes, you have the ability to go ahead and hire someone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At this point, you're shaking your head. Shaking my head. Okay. I have, I have another question. I didn't read what report made you cover this. What is the status of the, the insurance programs? Are they, is it progressing? Where, where is it set? That's a beyond my wheelhouse. So okay. the, the conservation district employees of Michigan are the ones who pulled that all together. Yeah, and I haven't right. heard anything, but I also don't know if I get their emails. So have, have you guys received anything yeah. at all? About, about, about the health insurance? <coughs> like insurance. insurance. We insurance. use the health insurance. Our district does yes. use it. So um, you would have to sign up um, starting, I think it starts November 1st, because we're in the middle of a, a year. So. I think the open period is basically the month of October. At least that's how it was last year. So you guys would be able to sign up starting like end of September, like the month of October basically. And it, it's usually effective as of November 1st. But, but weren't they looking at other benefit programs too? Like, we have that's what both. I thought. Yeah, so one of our employees uses the health insurance and the dental insurance. Um, and we pay part of it, she gets like a stipend, we pay part of it, and then she pays the rest out of her paycheck pre-tax, which is really nice. I can just deduct it before taxes, so that's handy. Um, and then they have what they call ancillary benefits, which is like critical illness, accident, um, <coughs> and hospital hospitalization, and it's like a couple dollars per month for each employee. They're very cheap. Um, and Sarah, our, one of our employees, broke her hand <laughs> recently, and she got like a decent amount of money for that under the, the accident policy. Just, it's money that's free to you, which is nice. So, yeah, they're nice policies and very easy to maneuver and sign up for and stuff like that. So, happy to help Heather if you guys do decide you want to do any of them or something. I can and for anyone who doesn't know this, no, Ashley sorry. Ryder, writer from, uh, writer or writer? Writer. Writer, <laughs> writer from yeah. Schoolcraft County Conservation yeah. District. Sorry. 
Sorry to interject. No, 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 I'm, I'm glad you did. No, 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 it's, it's fine. fine. Help me, because we do need to be able to articulate this to anyone that might come here, because that's the thing here. This whole program is about retention. Yeah. And that's the critical thing for retention. Yeah. Are these I would programs? like to, could you address, though, that we had talked about the retention in Delta. We haven't had too many issues in Delta County. No, and this I is. I want to make sure Glenn understands that. Yeah, Delta has not been an issue. This is just, <coughs> it's a statewide approach to looking at our programs. Right. Um, other districts have struggled, and you guys are going to be in a bad spot because you might get those refill permissions from Lansing, and then you've got a short window to get someone hired and to have them yeah. sign up for these yeah. benefits if they choose to. That's, so, that's what I was asking, yeah. Basically. There um, is, if you're a new employee, that is built into it. Like if somebody gets hired in in the middle of a, a year, they can still sign up for benefits. I want to say they have a 30-day window once they... So if you had somebody who started in January, they would just have to great. decide within that first 30 oh. days. Mm, same thing. Or that. if they get married yeah. or like have a kid or yeah. get divorced right. or whatever. Same, all that. It's the same rules as your normal health insurance that... Yeah. The key to it, right, is that the, the district needs to sign up and say yeah. we want to be a part of this. Yeah. Um, even if you don't have any staff on yet that want to take a part of it. Last year, Rory declined that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have to fill out like a, a packet worth of paperwork that is kind of something okay. includes in your official documents. This would be good for a personnel committee. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. and we'll, we'll, we'll add that. So. Yeah. Anything else? Not on my end. Oh gosh, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. I'll see you later. The, the NRCS report is next. Mike Yeah, yeah. Mike are, yeah so nice for conservation. Yeah, so I've got your report. Uh, those are the latest greatest program numbers for this year. Uh, we anticipate a whole lot of fluctuation between now and the end of our fiscal year, which is uh, the end of September. Uh, so most of the funding has been spoken for and uh, assigned to applications. Uh, so we did have a, a great year, I thought, uh, maybe the best year as far as uh, dollars funded in, in applications uh, of the Gladstone NRCS office, so uh, really terrific. Uh, sad to see McKaylee go, of course. Uh, couldn't ask for you know, a better employee out of her. Uh, terrific job over the last two, two years and a little bit of change. Uh, happy for her, so she, she did get on with NRCS. So great for for the agency, maybe even if a little bit bad for for me as a district conservation in Gladstone, but uh, certainly very happy for her. And then uh, of course the, the opportunities that uh, that she'll have with, with our agency. So uh, and then uh, Glenn, you asked about uh, some of the vacancies that I have. Uh, so we did hire an employee. Uh, I have Katie Mumford. Uh, she was supposed to start. Um, uh, next week Monday, but she's coming over from Montana. So uh, just to a uh, through a moving company uh, She's gonna be on the move uh, next week. Uh, she'll be arriving on June the 24th uh, she's, she's currently a soil conservation in the same position uh, only on Mont in Montana. So she does bring um, you know, a bunch of uh, Experience uh, she's originally from Wisconsin, so she does know what trees look like. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and she's happy, happy to be back, uh, uh, closer to home and, and closer to family for sure. So, so we're excited to have her on in, in a couple weeks from now. So, right, nice. right. Questions? No. It's exciting. All right. Thank you. Staff report. Okay. So as um, has been, I'm sure you figured out. By now that Michaela has left the district and gone on to become a federal employee. So we're really happy for her. Um, I know she's going to do amazing. And um, she seemed pretty excited about it too. Uh, we, were, we were down at the um, summer conference. Gary Lee spoke to everybody and kind of re-emphasized that whole um, that position, that C-type position, is it's meant to be a feeder program. It's it, they, they look at it like that so if you can get it get your head wrapped around that it's not as, as painful you know to we get someone for a year or two and then they go you know, they go on so that has helped me to know like that's the purpose yeah really. that's, so the c-tie program is a national mm -hmm. program and, and yeah everywhere nrcs tries to coach those c-ties it's it's kind of a try before we buy too. So we're getting bullied. Oh, that's some right stuff. Gary didn't say that. 
<laughs> she's over at Menominee, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she actually got hired on as a, a natural resource specialist. So in Glads, there's a handful of natural resource specialist positions across the state. They just started implementing those. Uh, so, so my position and the positions I have in my office are soil conservationists. Uh, so with that classification, they require a certain number of plant credits, you know, in college and soils. And Michaela didn't have that, unfortunately. So, you know, but the natural resource specialist, uh, it's it's less selective. You just need to have a um, you know natural resources degree and degree four degree something like that. Cool. Yeah. So it's good. We could help her get to her goal. That was one of her goals. Was yeah. To, to move into that position. So that's good. Um, and we also celebrated Holly today. It wasn't her 19th year today. It was a, a week we brought the Star Summer Conference. But 19 years as a district is pretty unheard of. I was asking her, has anybody beat you? And maybe Rory, she said. There's, a, there's one meat tech that's got oh. like a year on her. Okay. Ooh, what county? Um, I'm going to make sure I tell her this. <laughs> somewhere here. Oh. <laughs> somewhere down down below. below. They don't count. <laughs> So we, we got together for a potluck and um, the cookies over there were from Mr. Right. And celebrated Holly today. And we did thank you for that picture. Rachel sent me a picture of her when she was younger, but she kind of looks exactly the same. Yes. <laughs> um, so we did have the, I went to the um, MATD conference. It was two and a half days of fun. Um, it was nice for me because I got to really put a name to the face with um, some of the people that I talked to you and just get familiar with um, the staff and everybody that's working for the, these goals and contribution and then get inspired by a lot of the district managers that are down there. Um, so it, it was nice. We, we had some short sessions and I've heard the, the winter one will, will fall, but it's in the winter would be a little bit um, more robust. And then I also got uh, recently was told that we're going to have a UP district manager retreat. Is that kind of the title of it? So I've just been sending tons of ideas and I have so many more to read so, uh, <laughs> what we can do. But that will be August, tentatively August 27th and 28th at Clear Lake here. So all our, our uh, UP district managers will get together and, and I can bother them. Like the new little sister. Hey, can't wait. It'll be fun. Um, so in your packets, I have, so you can see, this is a letter that was drafted and sent to the city of Escanaba that um, Tyler Anthony reached out to me um, and was waiting. I guess he, this was something that he had asked for a while ago, uh, but it wasn't done. And, and he basically just wanted a letter of support just stating that um, they have this new approach to the city and they'd really like to get as many partners as possible to like actively engage in um, in how to make the city better, you know, and how to support everybody that lives here. So um, they in their in this new uh, structure that he put together, they wanted the conservation district in as part of the environmental consideration. So it's all it is is a letter of support and it just says that we would be willing to participate if this ever came to fruition. I'm not sure if it will or not, but anyway, so why don't you see this? He sent um, to Tyler quite a while ago. Um, I had wanted to be in the parade because I thought it'd be fun to get out in the, in the community. I didn't realize you had to pay for us stuff. So. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I had no idea. And I didn't even realize we didn't have one in Escanaba. It's only in Blackstone. So, um, which is fine. But, um, so anyway, I just have this. Uh, it's $10. I guess we would, we would be considered nonprofit. I'm not sure because we're not really, but um, there's not a government one. If you guys want to do it, I, it seems a little bit more than I thought it was going to be now. So maybe we'll just wait for the Christmas, which is free in Escanaba Christmas break. It's but, ten dollars to be in the parade. Well, it's ten dollars, and then you gotta decorate. Well, <laughs> so annoying. And throw candy. Okay. Your discretion. That's so, so hard. So anyway, right. I just thought it'd be nice because I've never really it's seen the district participate in the fuzzy stuff. But I, the fuzzy stuff's nice. You know, people see that that we are in full support. So I'm. I'll pass this around. You guys can 
just look at that. Oh, and I do have, I'm sorry to not have said this, but Holly's report is in here as well. I just had it out of order. Um, and then um, as far as the audit, so I do have on here to talk about budgets and appropriations, but I think you covered that. So I'd like to see that on the agenda in July and we'll start um, going through that as I'm got more time I've been working on the employee handbook which we'll talk about later but now we're gonna turn our focus to that so uh, that will be in the July agenda the audit we have to have an audit every two years um, and we have the even year so this is our time and I did reach out to a couple uh, Johnson and Rennie is who we have in the past used so they were pretty easy. I talked to them and they said, they gave us a quote of five grand, um, which I was like, Ew. but they said everything's, you know, the prices have gone up. And then I also reached out to somebody that I got from the district manager trust. It seemed to be the most economical, which was um, Schultz, Oswald, Oswald, Miller, and Edwards. Have you guys used those? that one? I think that's who we're planning on using this year. In Alpena? We used Johnson and Rennie also. Oh, you did? Yeah, that's who we've used for our audit. So this one seemed to be the more economical one. It's done in Alpena and a lot of district managers were suggesting. So I have to send our digital copy, which I just, you know, located, and then we'll see what they say. So I don't have their quote yet, but they are waiting on it, and I will do that tomorrow, and then I can get, get it to you guys on what their quote is. But then as soon as we um, decide who we're going to go with, we'll get a letter of engagement and that gets sent to Indard and well to the grants mailbox and papers. So that's all we need and that will cover fiscal year 24. Right? Am I saying that right? I hope so. Okay. Does that need board approval? For board approval. Imagine to, because of the... It's, you would be putting it into your fiscal year 25 budget, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. As far and as selecting, as far as choosing mm -hmm. them. Okay, I would sure. think so, yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm going to get you the other quote from you, and then I'll let you guys know for sure. Okay. okay. Maybe it just, you know, at, at the next board meeting. So I just wanted to let you know that that's, that's in the process. Um, and then I guess the only other thing I really had, well, I, I, I was invited to speak at the Delta County board meeting just to introduce myself and just to kind of talk about... Um, where we were, where we're at now, and where we plan on going. So just really briefly, I'm going to uh, speak and just try to find out if there's any specific concerns or areas of interest that the Delta <coughs> County Board of Commissioners feels that we should be focusing on. And it's just one step, because I'd also like to ask the community, which I, we plan on doing at our annual meeting, even though we fulfill the natural resource um, assessment, we're all new and I'd like to see what does everybody want um, so so there's that and then um, the last thing I had is our gear came I just wanted you guys to see it's amazing the swag <laughs> so we have our hats and um, you know because everybody could pick a the staff everybody there's three of us but <laughs> could pick a hat or uh, you know a different kind of hat and then they got hoodies a polo which i have on and then they each got one of these t-shirts you the, love it the mint with, and with the new logo yes we're like a, a like a little mint oreo or something i don't know but but I, but I want to put these up here too because now we went with Meyer. Thanks so to Adrian and Tony about Meyer. Love Meyer signs. I love them all, but uh, we ended up, they were the most economical, and now we have everything set up. So if we want to get stuff for board members or the community or put stuff on our, um, our store website, all we have to do is either, you know, we can do it or even the community can go on there and just say, I want this and that. And it's super easy. And all the, all the setup fees and stuff have been paid. So. I don't have the bill yet, they're gonna invoice us, but I will share it with you when we get it. And it's very close to what you guys wanted. So. Excellent. So that's all I got. Nice. Cool. So give me your orders for this after. The merge. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get it for you. I know Rachel needs something like and that. Ashley mine. Is that Chuck? <laughs> thing? I, have a, I have a question. That <laughs> and I, I do have an extra one of these we're gonna give away at the annual meeting, so. Oh. I have a question. We we this is so this is what we, we netted. We we we're gonna talk about that. That's it's actually on the agenda. agenda item now. What it is? 
the tree sale. It's oh, just okay. yeah, well, I, I got you. Yeah, yeah. 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 <coughs> I know it's kind of tricky, but or it's misleading. Yeah, okay, that's all I have. Well, thank you so much. That's, uh, <laughs> that's great. Commissioner Liaison Report. <laughs> Oh, and actually, Matt Jensen, for uh, some I've actually, thank you, some I've actually had a chance to interact with, for those I haven't, um, my name's Matt Jensen, I'm from District 5, I'll be your liaison. Um, it's been, uh, it's been interesting. Um, I had a wonderful tour today, going around the county forest, and we made that reflecting wood takes through earlier today so we yeah, actually uh, bonded by picking ticks off here. yeah you know so you know um, it's, it's you go the extra many, mile yep, many bridges taking ticks you know so um it's one of those going forward there's there's definitely uh um i don't foresee the animosity that that was created before us and has even remotely necessary there's definitely a place for, for both pieces and i think it um i think as we start to move a little more forward. I think people outside of both of the, the parks and, and the district will start to see that there's a, it, they work together as we move forward. So um, those are things that I see as we're, as we're starting. So, and I know I've talked to several of you already. Um, you know, my tour of the forest was a little more enlightening. Um, as far as where I know long-term where we're looking at, some of that's, you know, in that five and that 10 year plan down the road. So uh, there's items in there that are not, you know, immediate even for us when you look at that. So, um, you know, I have reached out when I looked at the meat plan, um, I see a, an eight acre parcel has 124 feet of growth. Um, I own a woodworking business, 120 feet. Um, it's, it's not a whole lot of board feet when I look at that, especially off of eight acres. So, um, that was one I've reached out. I was kind of curious on where those numbers and stuff came from. Um, I have read through those reports. Um, I've spent a lot of time in those reports and I will continue. Um, and of course, I will come up with more questions that I will, you know, pass along to Joe and Heather appropriately. So um, if you have anything that you want, you know, as we go back, as we start to move a little more forward, go back to the, the county board as well, definitely. Um, reach out, give me a holler. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Matt. Matt. Kelly. I'm. I'm just. We have a slash, so. Uh, no, I'm just public. Yeah. Do you want to mention about how we did our withdrawal letter? Yeah, they had they had a point there, but yeah, we can mention in our last board meeting, um, we had asked our administrator, not the last one, the previous one, mm -hmm. to actually send a. Um, Withdrawal of complaint. Yeah, uh, a letter to withdraw the complaint letter from the previous commissioners. So we actually had voted on to send, um, have her send a letter rescinding that complaint. Mm -hmm. I think that had something to do with me. That was your meat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh goodness. <laughs> really, yeah. Tongue in cheek humor. Yeah. No, I was at the meeting yeah. and yeah. So, so thanks. But that way you guys are aware of that as well. Yes. Yeah, for the public. Thank you. It's for the nice public. to be out of the woods on that. Yeah. And and also. No uh, pun intended. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for making the uh, our our meet the meet the forest management plans associated with all the county public lands available to the public. Mm -hmm. We still can't release them, but uh, we can through FOIA, but we can share them. That you can give a few caps. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think Thanks that was a, a consensus. If going forward, those are going to be public anyway, why would we not release these that we already have? They're not secret. Mm -hmm. So why not start now? Cool. Yeah. Those. Thanks for doing that. All right. Anything else? Perfect. Uh, unfinished business. Accounting firm update. Schneider, Larch, Hoppala, and Company. Those are our accountants. Is there any? Is there anything left with that? Well, I think I touched that. Mm -hmm. You did in my report. So they're still working on us. Okay. We're, we're, I think with the addition of the secret funds that just flowed into the, into the, <laughs> into the organization, uh, we might be able to have a, uh, a chance at balancing our books now. All right. <laughs> So close. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Anything else? Should we? 
Does this need to stay under unfinished business, or um, do you think we're we're kind of done with that? I think. Well, we can. Well, maybe one more to see. Okay. We can see I, when it's it when it's actually yeah. so we can put a completed. Into it. We can mm -hmm. hand out cookies. Okay. I got cookies over there, so it's a good see. sign. Yeah. So moving right along, uh, county financial obligation to district. That's still open. I spoke with uh, Administrator Young about this, and I've spoke with new commissioners. So hopefully, we can make some progress on uh, closing closing the books on that. Uh, now that we have a better idea of how our books are organized and reconciled. Um, I'm going to try to make some progress on that over the next month so that we can celebrate taking that off of old business with cookies at the same time as the accounting firm. Um, same thing with Steve Wary, employment compensation while district's park manager. I spoke briefly with Ashley, um, Ashley Young about that and um, that's still under review by uh, the the county, so hopefully we can make some progress on uh, on addressing that that uh, outstanding claim. D jointly owned dump trailer. I think it's sitting in Pioneer Trail Park. I actually have an idea on this. The original intent of this was it was it's a three way split. I think everybody knows this three way split between Mr. Matson, uh, the county, and the uh, district. conservation district. Yes. So what I would like to see is that we, the original intent that the district was gonna hold the uh, certificate of title and register it to the district. So I would like to see us go ahead and move forward with that paperwork. Since the previous owner is not responding, our option is going through and doing paperwork with the Secretary of State. Are you listening to this, Heather? I'm writing it down. Yeah. Good. So we have to go through the Secretary of State, get paperwork, get a surety bond, and then get like a law enforcement inspection, and then we can get a certificate of title reissued to the district. Would you be willing to do all that and keep track of your time on that? And then we can, once we have it registered, then we can talk with our partners and put a proposal together. Yes. Could we motion for something like that, just to make it official? I would make the motion that our manager follow up on that. Okay. I want a second. Because then that would be. I'll well, second, second that just okay. for discussion. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. I'll second for discussion, and then because we need to move this. This piece of scrap needs sure. to be. Oh, that's a valuable asset. It's, it's a it needs to be done. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. It's a valuable asset, but the no, no, I, I, I agree with you. Our, because we we're not even sure who owes who owes what yet. I think or we are. We, we will. I, I I'm pretty. I I'm resolved that we own fifty percent of that. Uh, Mr. Matson owns one third, and the county seventeen percent. I've gone through. I mean, those numbers so. And that goes back to the trail. That, right? that mm -hmm. goes back to the accounting trail. Okay. If one of the other co-owners wants to argue that, then they can step forward. But I think Excuse once me. we get this, can know. you say that again? The conservation district owns fifty. <coughs> Matson owns seventeen, and the county owns thirteen. No, no. no. thirty. Oh. Matson owns a third. A third. Oh, a third. Matson owns 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 a third. So they're, they have a thousand into it, even though your motion was to sell, your previous motion was to sell for 2,000. So that's three, four. So Mr. Matson owes, how much? Two, 2,000 on that, right? I thought it was two. Shoot. <laughs> you know, in 3,000, four, five, six, yeah, a three, two, one. Three, two, one split. Okay. So we have 3,000 into it, Matson has 2,000 into it, and the county has 1,000 into it. That's my number. You know, it was a six thousand dollar total purchase at the time. Right, and who knows as much as we can decipher. And, and Rory offered to pay each partner two thousand dollars, but there was a there was basically a sale back in twenty twenty two that nobody knew about, <laughs> and that's been reported to law enforcement. And you know, if law enforcement and the AG wants to deal with that, fantastic. If not, uh, this is what I this is what I think is fair. Three, two, one. 
And once we have the, uh, it registered to us, which was the original agreement, then we can go forward once everything's clear. Otherwise, it's just gonna stay in that park and I don't know what's gonna happen to it. This is it's strange, but why that's would, the way the world works. Okay. So we so had a motion and a second. Does this seem reasonable? Is there any more discussion? Uh, I guess it is reasonable since you're losing. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> what? Who is it? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, there's, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, there hasn't been any forward motion, so we can drive that once we have a certificate, once we have a registration. Great. And I'm, I'm happy to push, push forward on that like I, I do on many things. So. Yeah, I need three address. Cool. All those in favor of? Uh, Aye. Aye. <laughs> So that motion, I was going to repeat it, but uh, okay. Uh, I, any opposition? That motion passes. Thank you so much. Meep allegations by county. As the commissioners pointed out, um, for all intents and purposes, that, that was resolved with a letter back to the state saying, yep. uh, and this can be struck. Struck. Can be struck. 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 And more importantly, the uh, allegations had been, uh, well, they were unfounded in my point of view. And, and those, all those, uh, all those forest management plans are now uh, available to the public. Mm -hmm. So get in there and find out why they weren't originally. So that's the end of that. Us. There's cookies over here to celebrate that. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I have a little humor, otherwise you just will to die, right? Uh, August annual meeting and director's election. Uh, at our last meeting, we've, we've had uh, ex expressed interest and we made a decision to table it so that we would not uh, just appoint someone by the board since, since there was there's a lot of interest, and I, I think the best way to handle this, or I think the consensus was, we're just gonna do the election for the remaining part of the vacated board seat, which is one year. So I went through the process last time, and now we just have to, our, we moved, Glenn, you weren't here, but we moved to have our, our uh, help me out here, our, our date. We changed it from the 7th to the 14th, mm -hmm. Which means it's during that, fair week. But that fell during yeah. fair week. Right. But here's the thing from our motion with the new date, the nominating petitions, which requires a signature by five district residents, will be due by G June 14th, 2024. Yep. So by the end of business. So we can't move it back to the seventh, right? Correct. Okay. But we can move it forward. So what I was proposing is we also have a board meeting on the 21st. We just swap those two, we do our annual meeting on the 21st, we do our board meeting on the 14th, because we're meeting those two weeks anyway, but this gives the, the public a better chance, an opportunity to come out and enjoy and celebrate with us. And then see some of you know our local farms that are donating their time, and their resources and their products and their goods, I want to give them as much spotlight as we can at the annual meeting. And people that might have conflicts because of <coughs> families coming to town or the fair. You know, it's just, it's better for the public to be able to come to our annual meeting rather than our board meeting. Okay, so if you, if you reached out to all the people that you had set for the 14th and they're available on the 21st? Yes. And what that does with the election is it just pushes it back. We're still within the day, pretty days. dang close, it's yeah. So it's um, it's uh, well, I don't know if Rachel, if you wanted to talk about that, so we're totally transparent on that. But so we bump it out to the Friday the twenty first. Is that right? Wednesday the twenty first, which is the following Wednesday. So it would be June. right. June twenty first, right? Nominating Friday. Is that a Friday? Friday the twenty first. Oh, for the nominees. Yes, sorry. Yes, for the petitions, and that's just giving the public an extra week. And I have, I told Heather, yes. I have no problem with that. So we've got nine days. 
our, our candidates would have. Mm -hmm. Does that does that work for you? That works for me, but that's up to you guys to choose. Oh, I, yeah. uh, oh I, I just I just want to make sure. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I did. Yeah. I so I've talked to the I've talked to the venue. I've talked to the participants that are that are assisting, and everybody is good with, with that. Moving it to August 20, the annual meeting to August 21st, in the in the uh, the election for the, the board board uh, open board vacancy. So those petitions would be to due due by June 21st. Friday. Friday. Yes. Happy okay. birthday. And then uh, what did you say? And then uh, moving our board meeting. <coughs> You know, exchanging that date, so we have our board meeting on the fourteenth. Oh, our, our regular board meeting. On Which the I think it's important. We talked about. I had talked about canceling it because some people sometimes will leave that out of that. You know, just have a month to celebrate. But because we have budgets and appropriations coming, it's very important to get through that, that stuff. So. Six cylinders instead of four. Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to make that motion? I'll make that motion as read or stated. I can repeat it. <laughs> no, I can repeat it. Very, yeah. Yeah. How about a second? I'll support that. that. Okay. Is there any discussion? I think we beat it to death. Uh uh. <laughs> Close. Mm, no. No, this one's, this one's important. So the motion is to move the annual meeting and the director's election for the open board seat from the 14th of August to the 21st of August moving the regular board meeting to the 14th of August, which would make the petitions, nominating petitions due on uh, June 21st, 2023. Any more discussion on that? No. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That motion carries unanimous. All right. Thank you. Oh, for G. Matson lawsuit against the district. I have uh, a written opinion or a written communication from our attorney that we need to consider. So, and we will have to go into closed session for that to consider that written opinion from our attorney regarding this lawsuit. And in order to do that, we have to have a, uh, a motion to go into closed session to consider that written opinion. And it, no. Give me a second. Oh, come on. And then we'll do a roll call vote. And it's just to consider that written opinion. We'll have to keep a separate set, set of minutes, Secretary Sandy Water. No. And that won't be disclosed unless the team is by court. Joe, can Whoa. we have a conversation about the Open Meetings Act? Yes. Yeah. So I have the language here, and I'm going to read it because I do not think that that is a legal way to go into the closed session. It says to consult with an attorney. Do you have your attorney here? No, but I have better. There's case law for this. It is also to consider. Uh, it is also to consider a process that's um, allowed by law. Let me just get this for you. This, I'm just going to go ahead and. Yeah, you're allowed to go into cons closed session to discuss something that's exempt under FOIA, and that would be a written opinion by an attorney. I'm certain of that. Just give me a second here. I'm not doing the case now. What was that? Make sure we get this right. Let me, let me get the language, I'm sorry. Session. 
Ah, here it is. This is why we're allowed to go into closed session, to consider material exempt for, from discussion or disclosure by stat, state or federal statute. And this is a communication from our attorney, which is protected under attorney-client privilege. Hmm. That's it. We'll you have any questions on that? Yeah. What? We can step into the hallway. Oh, no, no, we'll go in the back room there. Oh. So you're good. Are you good with that? I'm not weighing in on it. I'm just letting you know that it, it, okay. I don't, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so we're, yeah. So I'll read it again just so it's clear. It's, it's to consider material exempt from discussion or disclosure by state or federal statute, and that would be an attorney-client communication that's privileged. Does anyone want to make a motion to go into closed session? I'm moving, go into closed session and listen to what the uh, attorney has written. Great, I'll second that. Okay. I need a little call. For discussion, uh -huh. I'll get discussion here. Um, what is the, what, it, why, what is the exemption? Why are, do you have a problem with it? I guess that's what I'm asking. What is the so ramifications? If the Open Meetings Act says to consult with an attorney regarding trial or settlement strategy in connection with specific pending litigation, but only if an open meeting would have detrimental financial effect on municipalities litigating or settlement position. And what I'm saying is we're going into closed session to consider uh, attorney-client privilege, a written opinion of attorney, uh, to consider material exempt from discussion or disclosure by state or federal law. And that would include attorney-client point point privilege, uh, written opinion one, of an attorney. One recent uh, uh, county commission meeting going uh, participants went into closed session because of their attorney in Grand Rapids or there, wherever this guy is at. Um, and that was closed session for that. I would assume there can't be, a, can't possibly be something different for this organization. Compared to no, it's the same thing. So if your attorney's here, you then you can go in to talk about a settlement. If your attorney's not here, then you have to consider material exempt from discussion or disclosure by state or federal statute. You know, attorney or attorney client communications are privileged. That's th this is not from me, this is from our attorneys. So and we need two thirds of the vote. And then I have here, but no, the board is not permitted to go into closed session to discuss an attorney's oral opinion as opposed to a written legal memorandum. Correct. That's why it's written. Point no. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. All right, how about a roll call? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does you. Okay, so we're <coughs> team. Yes. Uh, Mandy Water. Yes. Brockman. I'm with Steen. And Kathleen. Yes. I think 75 percent. I think is more than two thirds, right? I don't know. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So what's the record? I right, could. It's uh, 6:44. We're gonna retire to discuss this, and we'll be right back. <laughs>